Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you what diagnostics tool I keep in my glove box when I'm out and about in my LD and I'll show you how to use it and some of the features. Let's head out to the car. So this is what I keep in my glove box, it's the OBD11, this is the pro version. I bought this before you had to pay the subscription, but apparently now you have to pay a subscription. You might still be able to get this on Amazon um, if they've got some left which already come with a pro license that maybe you don't have the subscription. I don't really know how that works, but also you see in one of the videos we've done the Carista, which I don't think was that good, but I know they've done a few updates on that where you can do the live data. But personally, I bought a pro license, I got it in time. So I paid the one-off payment. I don't know how much this was. I think it's about 120 quid. I think you can get them for 100 pound, 110 pound off their website back then. Um, they were still around about that figure. But I got the pro license and I have no subscription. So I'm glad I got it when I got it. So I'm going to show you what you get in the box. So obviously this is it, the box. Then you get the little dude inside, the little dongle. So what you get in the box, you get this. The little dongle that plugs in. So we'll do that and we'll show you some features on the phone as well. So I'll get my phone out ready. And like always, on any of these Bluetooth diagnostics, get the app, bang, there's the app there. Happy days. Click on that. And that will load up that. So I've got a picture of my car because that's what I chose to have there because that's what I'm using this for. But obviously, I can use this in anyone's car and having the Pro License means I've got a lot more features than if you don't have the Pro License. I'll show you some of the features that we, we've got with this. So first of all, let's plug it into the port down there. Bang, and it goes. I think it flashes a certain color. It's, it's red at the moment. I'm sure it goes blue when it's connected. Get the ignition on. Right, so now it's on. Oh, let's turn all that off. We don't want none of that on. So get all of this stuff all off. So I don't know if you can see that screen now. I will go do a screenshot anyway in a minute so I'm just gonna connect to the car it does take a little bit of time to connect but when it does it's perfect so I just wait for this to connect right so now it's connected it's telling me my voltage in the battery straight away 11.7 volts um, so it's gone yellow when, when you've got good voltage it goes green so like, if I start the car up this bit here I hope you can pick this on the camera but as I said I will show on the screen what you can do better in a minute but i just want to show you it will just go it should go green all right so now it's gone green so it shows i've got good voltage in there so i can actually even leave the car running while i do a lot of bits on it but it's always best just to do it with the ignition on well you have to do it with the, the um ignition on so I'll just come out of that, I was cancelling the scan because I want to show you on the screen. So I'm going to go to the screen, so you should be able to see this um, in one of the things. Let me just get this all sorted out, X recorder. The screen recording on, so OBD11, bang, connect to the car. Just we'll start this again, isn't it? Right. So we're on the screen now, so we've got 12 point something volts in the car now, because I've just started out, so it's all good. We'll scan the car, and it'll go through 16 modules. So we'll do that scan now. And you'll hear a few little beeps and whistles, with like the um, ESP flashing away, and weird and wonderful stuff like that as it goes through the different modules. So we'll just scan through all the modules, which I do like that with a diagnostics when it does go through all the individual modules and you don't have to go in and out, in and out of different modules, which the Chris did do as well. But obviously, as I said, I don't pay a subscription fee with this. I know you do have to now, but you might be lucky and you might be able to get one when you don't. But anyway, I do find this a lot better. So it's finished, guys. So we've got one 140 control unit, which I know exactly what it is straight away. That will be 
the radio. So as you can see, the radio has come up there with a fault. And we go to faults on that. Telephone, transceiver and CD changer. The reason we've got those faults is because we don't have a telephone transceiver and we don't have a CD changer. And this radio I did put in, uh, I did have a different one in first of all and I did change it because to be honest with you, the button started pedal on the old one so I managed to get this one pretty cheap. So I threw this in so we're not really going to worry about those faults. We're back out of that, back out of that. So as you can see, everything's all good. It shows you all the... Um, all the modules, so you go into engine, obviously live data, which is pretty cool. So you can go into um, like enter like measuring blocks. Um, so 93, oh god, what have I done? 93 should be for the positioning sensor. So if you're um, checking for stretch and stuff. If you've got the E888 engine, you can check for stretch on this. And we will be doing a video where we go and check someone's chain for stretch. So you can see that doing that. Obviously that won't really do what I needed to do on this because mine's a belt, not a, not a chain. Anyway, we'll come out of that and I'll show you some other cool features that we can do with this. So we've got the live data, you can do long coding, you can do adaptions. So you can change channels and do stuff like that, which is pretty cool. And the, the main reason why I really bought this, because when I put the fixed wing on, um, I needed to cancel out, you know, obviously, obviously the electric spoiler on the back, so I didn't get any warnings on the dash. So I'm gonna show you how you can get into things like that in a minute. But just obviously some of the features, so you can get into engine, transmission, brakes, steering angle sensor, air conditioning, central electrics, airbag, steering column, dashboard, gateway, immobiliser, driver's door, steering assistant, comfort mode, sound system, passion door and radio. So lot, lots of different features and diff, different modules. As I said, it goes for different modules and you can go into them individually. But where it gets really cool is when you go into car and then you go into apps. So you go onto the apps, you can do adjustments, so like headlamp washers, you can do stuff with that. Electric spoiler, that's what I've done with mine, where I turned, turned off the electric spoiler so I didn't get the warning. So as you see, mine's off, which is pretty good. Taurus solution, headlamps, value, I don't really know what I'm doing with that. It's not supported in my car. Um, but as you can see, there's so many different like options, like cornering lights, where you can get your fog lights to come on um, when you go left and right and stuff like that. But obviously all different cars are gonna have different features from one another depending on how they were specced at the factory and if you've put any retro mods on afterwards. So you've even got a button up here, retro fits. So it says no apps in this category at the moment for some reason. You've got workshop, so oil service reset, which is brilliant. Um, so obviously you can change the lights and stuff, the DOLs and all that stuff. So we come back out of all that. Gauges, now this is pretty cool. Go into gauges, turbo boost. So it says not available, but I know this does actually work. Because I have used this. So if I come back out of that, it will scan here. See, now it's working. So now you can see your boost pressures and stuff on a gauge, so if you put this on a phone holder or anything like that on your dash, you've technically got a boost gauge. Um, engine torque, it'll go for all of that. Uh, fuel pressure regular uh, rail, fuel pressure rail. That's nice fuel pressure rail, especially it just just been turned on. It's pretty good. Uh, fuel level, command throttle actuator, accelerator pedal position, E D B, temperature. Just loads and loads and loads of features, and they're so easy to use. The gauges, you know what I mean? You can just literally just click on them. You can see like air intake temperature, time in advance, vehicle speed, fuel trims, engine RPM. So that's the RPM at the moment. So obviously, it's sort of it's not on choke, but because it doesn't have a carburetor, it's fuel injected. But you know what I mean? See, obviously, it's starting to come off now. You'll see it's starting to fall down. But it's so cool just having those gauges. Um, so obviously you've got the apps, the gauges, charts. So there's no charts available, control units, 
back onto that where it goes through all the all the control units where you can see what the fault is. See, that's that's the thing with the um, the Carista. It will show you the fault. It will it will show you that you have a fault, but it doesn't actually show you what the fault is unless you've got the page description. I'm hoping the page description is is just for some of the pro features, and actually seeing the um, the fault is still free. Um, so I am hoping they have still done that. I mean, I can't check that because mine is the pro version, which I don't pay a subscription for, and I don't have to. So I said, if I go, if I go, so I've got one 40 control unit, and we know we spoke about that. That's the right. That's the radio. So we don't really worry about that. So if I go into transmission, you can go into faults there. Bang. There are currently no faults. But the good thing is, even if it does, say you've got a fault, it will tell you the fault, which is good. And I said the coding, you can code in things. So if you want to do a retrofit, you can encode in the value if you do your information, find out what the code actually is, so you don't muck it up, which is always something good. But to be honest with you, my overall thing of this, the uh, Obel 11, it's a great, great tool just to keep in the glove box when you're out and about. You know what I mean? It's tiny, it doesn't take up any space. You can take it anywhere. Even if you're at car meets and stuff and someone's got a problem, like, oh no, my car's got a fault now, I've got energy management. Like, it's in your glove box, isn't it? You can just whip it out and go and help them out. It's always good to go and help someone else out if you can. Um, so definitely get the OBD11 over the career start, is my opinion. Um, obviously, VCDS is the way forward, but I ain't got to carry a laptop around with me using this. I just do it all on my phone and it's absolutely brilliant. So that was just a quick overview of what the OBD11 can do. There's obviously so many features of it, it's definitely worth getting. Um, if anyone else has ordered the uh, the Pro one now, it'd be good to hear how that subscription's working and how what they're actually getting for their subscription and what is it doing without the subscription. That would be good to know. So if you've got that, just comment down below. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. I was supposed to be shooting another video today, but due to the weather, been a bit unpredictable I couldn't really um, I couldn't meet up with someone else that I was going to do a video with but that is coming still so exciting things coming on the channel um, hit up Instagram on uh, vag.social it's a collaboration between me and another youtuber where we're going to try and get the car community together do day trips out ride outs car meets um, go to meets together get the convoys together all sorts of stuff like that that'll be launching very soon um, we were hoping to start it today, but obviously the weather is very unpredictable. I mean, we want it to be a nice day so we can get some good video and some good pictures together to release it all. But stay tuned to that, and that will be coming soon. So my, my Instagram, carchris82, and the other one, vag.social. Follow them, and uh, exciting stuff is to come on that. So stay tuned and watch this space, and I'll see you in the next one.